This is Helping of Happiness, episode number 154. Today we have on Paige Payne from Paige Payne Creations, and she is teaching us all about how art in our home can help us gather, uplift, and heal. Hi, I'm Hilary Hess, and you're listening to Helping of Happiness. I am a crazy mom of seven kids who loves to build memories through eating delicious family recipes and going on adventures with my family. On this podcast, you'll be introduced to light-filled people and ideas that inspire me to be a better mom and help me bring family closer together and closer to Jesus Christ. I am so excited for you guys to meet Paige. She is really the cutest. Paige Payne is an amazing artist who sells original pieces of art, prints, does custom orders, and also has this really cool watercolor course that you can take. She does free tutorials on Instagram every week of different ways that you can create different pieces of art. And she's just so charming. You're going to love her so much. But real quick, before we hear from Paige, I just wanted to remind you that if you would love to receive more of our recipes, links up to our podcast notes, travel tips or home and family hacks, make sure that you subscribe to our Helping of Happiness newsletter. So all you have to do is go to our homepage on helpingofhappiness.com and put in your name and your email and you'll get this sent to your inbox. Our freebie resource library that is filled with all different kinds of menus and all kinds of meal planning hacks and printables, all kinds of things that are so much fun, all in there, and you can access it anytime. We'll give you that password in your email when you subscribe to our newsletter for that. So without further ado, here is Paige, and when Paige is done, we make sure that you hang on for our Spoonful of Spirit segment with Lindy Shock. Well, I'm super excited to introduce my new friend Paige to you guys mm -hmm. today. Paige, say hello. Hello. <laughs> Paige, I'm so glad you took some time to talk to us today. This is so fun for me. I'm so excited to be here. I've never done a podcast before, so well, this is a big deal. <laughs> this is awesome. I love it. Well, and I just love following you on Instagram so much. Your paintings are amazing Aww, and you. just so filled with light and just your personality. It's just like so fun and cute. And I'm just like, oh, I just want to be good friends with Paige. Aww, that's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. I, I like, I don't know. I guess I connect with businesses better when I like feel like I know the person, you know? So I'm glad that comes across because I, I never want to like be too much in people's face, but I want them to like know me, you know? So it's totally, it's that. coming off amazing. I love it. <laughs> Super cute. Super cute. So let's start out. Let's just talk about you and your family a little bit. Tell me about. Okay. Me. So I am the second oldest of five kids. Um, the three older girls were in our 20s, and then I have two siblings, a brother and a sister, still at home. So we're kind of like, there's lots of age gaps there. I went to Brigham Young University. I also served a church mission. So I did that kind of, I, I started school, and then I went on my mission, and then came back to school. Yeah. And then I met my husband in 2017, and we got married in 2018. And then we both graduated school in 2019, and then we've been here in Iowa City since then. Um, he's going to dental school. So awesome. Yeah, pretty fun. I haven't had a lot of time in Iowa, but I did get a traffic ticket in Iowa one time. <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> we were on like this two week vacation. Half of it, I was without my husband, just with the kids, like traveling, driving everywhere. Uh -huh. We didn't have a lot of time to take off work, but we didn't want to fly our kids all these different places that we were needing to, anyway. I got no. a call. I got a ticket and it was, I didn't even know about it. It was one of those you get in the mail afterwards. You oh, don't really? really take the picture of your oh car. Oh my gosh. I forgot that they do those. Yeah. I, now I'm careful if I'm ever driving in Iowa. Yeah. So I think I have never, I haven't, I have yet to be pulled over in my life, but I know if I ever get pulled over, I will just immediately burst into tears. I just know. It. <laughs> like if I even see a police car, I like start getting like, like I breathe, like start breathing fast. I just <laughs> hang my head in shame. You caught me. Just, I know. So I know. Funny. I did it. I did it. Yeah. Did it. Where did you serve your mission? Um, so I actually served in Salt Lake. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
I know we, my family, I, oh, I didn't mention this at all, but uh, I was born in Canada and then my family moved to Scotland when I was three. So I, then we were in Scotland until I was 13. So we moved to Chicago when I was 13. And so I spent like high school there. So uh, yeah, I didn't, I always thought I was going to be called, like, I thought I was going to be called to Africa or something. I don't know. <laughs> and then, then I opened my call and I like burst into tears. I think everyone thought I was like feeling spirit, but I was just like, oh, so late. Are you kidding me? Especially <laughs> if you had just been at school at BYU. Yeah. You're like right I was there. At BYU. I was so upset, but it was amazing. I loved it. It was yeah, it was wonderful, like perfect for me. But I, like when I first opened the call, I was like, "You, you got to be." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it was pretty funny. I love but that. It was, awesome. Yeah. My daughter's serving in Southern California right now, so I think really? in her mind, she was like, "Oh, let me go to England or Scotland or somewhere yeah. European." But. Then it was like her second reaction was, but wait, I'm glad I'm getting called to the States because it's COVID and who knows if I would ever oh, even yeah. get to go to where I was called to if it was That's out of the true. States. That might be so. even worse. Like if you were in like an amazing country and you couldn't leave. Yeah. yeah. That might be even worse. That's been yeah. kind of miserable for a lot of, a lot of missionaries or going for I just know. a little while and having to come back or Ooh, I don't know. I think about that all the time. I'm like, I thought my mission was hard, but that would be <laughs> and just the anticipation. Am I ever going to go there? Yeah. Am I going to stay here? So yeah. I'm glad she's just where she's going to be. And yeah, it's me too. It's better. That's for so sweet <laughs> that you have a missionary daughter. I know oh. it's crazy. Oh. I feel like I'm your age. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your art a little bit. When did you realize you had such a passion for art? Has it been your whole life or is it like, yeah, that's start? a good question. My like earliest memories are just like, that was the only thing I ever like loved to do. Just like, since I was a baby, I just was always like, I was always just drawing and painting. My parents like made me learn violin for a while and I hated it more than anything. <laughs> I just wanted to paint. <laughs> and so eventually uh, they like let me quit. And I think they were nervous about me quitting music because they wanted to make sure like I had something like hobby that I could like really nurture, you know? Yeah, then I just like went like full steam into art. I had an art teacher in Scotland who stayed after school with me like several days a week to give me extra lessons. Ever since like I had those lessons with her, I just knew it was what I was going to do. And I was like 10 maybe. And it was just like always my thing. So yeah. That is really awesome. So yeah. what like did your upbringing in Scotland have a, like a big impact on your art or is it mainly just that teacher or like what were some? Yeah, of that's a good question too. That? Yeah, definitely that teacher like kind of helped me believe in myself. And it, I mean, I know I was super young, but I think she really instilled in me that I could actually do that, you know, that it wasn't like some like dream, you know, that wasn't possible. And then my childhood in Scotland, for sure, like, continues to influence my artwork like I do like a lot of paintings of Scottish scenery and buildings in that way and so when I paint I I do often think about Scotland because I it's kind of like connected for me because that's where I spent like my most like formative years and so yeah it's all kind of connected and I I love to do artwork about Scotland too because I feel like it kind of helps me remember that part of my life and like feel more connected to it so yeah. So what were some that. of your favorite things? What did you love the most about living there? It just oh seems like so exotic and dreamy to me to think of it's living. So, oh, I mean, I know like we tend to romanticize things. So like, <laughs> like a lot of terrible things happened in Scotland too. And I, my childhood was like hard in some ways, but <laughs> I, and I, I like have to rem remind myself that like, no matter where <laughs> you live, like life is hard, you know, <laughs> but I think my favorite part was love history. And so like every weekend we would go to a different castle and it was just so amazing. Oh, I just loved it. There's so much to do, so much, so much history to learn. It's such a rich history because it's been, the country's really old, you know, it's been there for much longer than America has. So yeah, I think that was my favorite part. And it's just so beautiful, like the most beautiful place because it is always raining. So it's so green and gorgeous. My ancestors come from Scotland, so it's my dream oh, really? to someday oh. go back there. I know. You know I would love. I know. I want to take my husband so bad because yes, 
ah, I want to show him like, cause I talk about it all the time, but I oh, want to like yeah. show him, you know, what it's actually like. So yeah, it's such one a day. part of you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about art because I feel like your art has so much purpose in it. So what are, what are some important purposes or messages that you think are really important to express through your art? So my religious beliefs, obviously, like that's kind of one of the driving forces behind my artwork. I enjoyed like the artwork, like I saw in church buildings and stuff when I was younger, but I didn't know. I, I never felt like it, it felt super personal to me or I don't know. I didn't, I never felt like really connected to it. And I, I know that I like knew that I had something unique to bring to the like religious art conversation happening. So that definitely drives my artwork. And also a lot of the people I think that follow me aren't of my same religion, but I think it's really cool that we can all specifically like a lot of Christians follow me, even if they're not of my specific religion. And I think art is just so cool because it can bring so many different religions and religious beliefs together. The same message can be shared and like uplift people of all beliefs, you know? So yeah, I'm really, really passionate about that, about sending messages of like love, uplifting people, regardless of like, if you're of the same faith as me or not, you know? So yeah, definitely that. And then also I am like really passionate about like learning to love your body and overcoming like the feeling that your body is like not beautiful and it's like it's something that needs to be fixed and a lot of my family members like have struggled with eating disorders and body dysmorphia and so that's something I'm passionate about too is like making artwork that has a variety of people of all like body shapes so that <laughs> I've noticed that in your art I love yeah. that I just like hated that like a lot of times you like just see like one body shape you know and it's not that like artists do that on purpose it's just like when you're drawing a person you kind of just draw like you think you kind of have like a go-to draw yeah <laughs> you kind of just have like a go-to body shape you draw and so I just really want to create artwork that has like normal people in it you know and so people can relate to it and be like oh my gosh that's what I look like <laughs> so yeah I'm passionate about that as well I think I yeah. love that. What are your favorite things to paint? What are my favorite things to paint? I love painting. Yeah, it kind of depends on my mood. I love painting landscapes. If I'm like in the right mood, I love painting like people. Usually like when I, if I'm like in a kind of, if I'm doing religious art, I'm often painting people. So I do like painting people. I did not for a long time because painting people is really hard. <laughs> it's really hard. I think it's yeah. actually really brave to paint people because I feel like one little smudge can just mess up that whole thing. Yeah, it is kind of scary. Anytime I paint someone, I'm like, I always like pray before I paint because I'm like, oh my gosh, please help this to work. Okay. Oh yeah. I love painting like flowers and like with watercolor. I love painting flowers and yeah. I love those loose florals that you've been putting on there lately. Yeah. Those are so so fun. Yeah. So what do you think? How, what, why is art so important to families? I I'm so passionate about, about that. I think that a lot of people, I don't know. I actually feel like Instagram is doing a really good job because it makes like art so much more accessible to like normal people who weren't necessarily like going to be stumbling across artwork. Now it's in their feeds and they see it more regularly. And I think that's so important because I feel like if you don't have artwork in a home, it's something where it's like, if it's missing, like your home isn't going to feel like terrible, but when it's there, it just adds so much to it, you know? And I really do think art, having artwork in, in a home can really invite the spirit into your home and make it like a, like a holy place in a certain way. And even I have a, I, I don't hang up much of my own work, <laughs> but I do have a print of like a painting I did of our heavenly parents hanging up and I just like, we'll see it in my, as I'm walking around our apartment and all the art I have in our, in our, in our apartment, just, it gives me the little reminder or it like feeds your soul in a way, you know? And I think people are definitely realizing that more and more, probably even, especially since everybody has spent so much time in their house <laughs> this past year. <laughs> and so I don't know if that makes sense. At it all. makes total sense. So it really kind of connects you to God, really. It, yeah. it really invites the spirit and 
I love that. And I, I feel like I've always loved art, but it's just been in the last year that I've realized how much it does have an impact on my, on my soul. So during the pandemic, we've been trying to paint a lot more with like as a family, especially mm-hmm. when things were super shut down last spring. Yeah. It's like, what can we do at home that we'll, yeah. we can all <laughs> like doing together. And, and I just realized how, what a release it is for me when I do, pa- I'm not very good. It's not like I'm an artist. Yeah. Or I would never <laughs> even hang it on the wall probably, but <laughs> it is something that I feel like it just feels good in my soul to paint. I just oh, feel yeah. great when I do it. And i I've been starting to follow all these different art people on my Instagram because I mm-hmm. love the art coming up in my feed. It yeah. just lifts me in a way kind of like music where it just touches yeah. me in a way that other things don't. And I think it's also great common ground where I can appreciate art. My four-year-old can appreciate that art. My 10-year-old, you know, like we can all yeah. join in on that where maybe it's not quite the same with some other media of yeah yeah no I I totally agree and yeah I'm the same like even though I do art myself I love like following lots and lots of artists because I don't know it's just it's hard to explain but when you're constantly taking in that kind of material it's gonna do good things for you you know as opposed to a lot of the time social media can be a place that like isn't not uplifting for people and so I think trying to take a lot of art into your life will just it will benefit you I really think it will (laughs) I love that well and I also love how accessible Instagram or just the internet makes art that you can see all Mm -hmm. different types because I feel like either you'd have to go to an art museum or you'd have to go to some store and there's such limited types of art but now you can just look at so many things yeah like so many different styles are appreciated now and totally yeah it's really amazing. It's changed, definitely changed the game for artists because like back in the day it used to be like, well, you have to find a gallery that will like showcase your work and that's pretty much it, you know? <laughs> and then you reach so, such a small amount of people that's kind yeah. of, it's just really broadened. Exactly. So yeah, it's been amazing for sure. I amazing. Okay, so I know you do some courses and things. So you tell us about that and what you offer so that us budding artists can learn how to do these things. (laughs) Absolutely. I actually like teaching others like how to paint is like one of my passions because actually a scientific fact that creating and like using your hands to create artwork does have a lot of mental and spiritual benefits I mean that's why there are like art therapists right they use art to help people like heal in emotional and physical ways and so whenever like people want to come and learn how to paint it just makes me so happy because I know it can benefit them I have really bad anxiety and so like one of the way a huge way I can overcome that is just because I get to paint all day you know so that's actually amazing yeah I love that It's so beneficial. And like so many people after, if they like do any of my tutorials will message me and be like, this helped me like so much with my anxiety today, or this helped me like if I was having, I don't know, thoughts about my eating disorder or whatever, this like really helped me overcome that. And I don't know, I just think, I just think it can benefit everyone, regardless of whether you think you are like quote unquote good at painting, you know, I think creating is just, it's like something that brings you closer to God in my opinion. <laughs> I love you with that. I, th- I think that that is exactly why it was so great for and calming for us when COVID first hit, because there was so yeah. much uncertainty and yeah. just give oh, yeah. me my watercolor set. I, yes. just need to, I just need to be away from all of the things and just yeah. get busy no, creating. I absolutely believe that. I, I do. I think that's so true. I teach just a free weekly tutorial on my Instagram. So we just paint different things that go with like the theme of the year or like the season that we're in. So we just did a Mother's Day one. And then at Christmas, we do Christmas ones. So those are free every week. And they're, I try and make them like really easy. So anyone can join of any skill level. I also do like paid workshops that are more in depth. So um, I'll do those like every other month or so. And 
Um, like so one of are my courses, like a live workshop, or is that something that you yeah? Purchase? So okay. well, I, I kind of have a mixture. Some of my courses are like pre-recorded, so I have a okay. course for watercolor beginners that is just an online course that you can do that you can purchase and buy anytime. And then I do live workshops. I just did a floral workshop, but I always record them. So if you um, like couldn't come live or whatever, or if you just found out about me later and you were like, Hey, I want to learn florals, then you can just go and purchase the recording of the workshop. So it's kind of similar. You can't even, I, it ends up being the same. <laughs> That's the awesome. So yeah, it's mostly just selling prints of my artwork and then I also do like custom paintings for people of like their homes or portraits or whatever. So yeah, that's kind of like the gambit of what I do. It's very flexible. I like that you're doing yeah. all different kinds of things. Does that make it a little more fun? There's a little more variety than. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause sometimes February, I just released a big collection of artwork of like Scotland inspired paintings. And sometimes when, after I'm working on a big collection, I'm like, okay. I need a break from like painting so much. So I'm going to teach a workshop this month instead. So I kind of like to rotate between, you know, the different things that I do and it helps, helps keep me like not burnt out and also um, helps me be able to like offer a variety of things to my customers and followers and stuff. So yeah. That is so awesome. Fun. Love it. And we'll link up to all those in the show notes so people can know where to find you. That would be so okay, great. Perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's tell everybody your handle. Uh, my handle is page pain and then underscore creations. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. What else? Is there anything else that you wanted to share today? Just thank you for having me. I love like, I could talk about art all day. So it's so fun to talk about it with someone who also has their own little business going it's so cool Their it's podcast work. so fun I so fun. love art I love it I feel like <laughs> I I just appreciate other people's talents so much and I love doing it even if I'm not that great at it I think it's really fun but I just think it's amazing I think that's amazing though that I that's the attitude like that I wish that ever everybody could have because I think a lot of people are like I know I'm not like what people would consider good so I'm just like not gonna try it but I'm just like yes, you need to try it. Like it's, it's not really so much about like what you make as opposed to like how you feel, you know? So yeah. I just want everyone to come paint with me because I just love having people join and like try something new. I think it's so good for you. So I can't wait. I'm going to jump on your <laughs> weekly tutorials. I think it's going to be so fun. <laughs> oh yeah, you should. It'd be so fun. <laughs> well, do you have a few minutes and we'll do the helpful and happy questions? Yes, for sure. Okay. So I like to do these because this ties our podcast in with the Helping of Happiness blog, where we cover food and like family recipes and travel tips for families and homemaking and family hacks, as okay, well as housing cool. our podcast. Yeah. So, so fun. This, and we get to get to know you a little bit better, which is super fun. So, yeah. First one, what is your favorite food or meal? My favorite food of all time uh, are fries. I thought you were going to say haggis since you lived in Scotland. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh my gosh. I hate haggis. It's so gross. <laughs> so French fries, do you have a certain spot where you like to get them oh or do you gosh. like to make them? What's do you like? I do you love like fries. that steak fries, a skinny shoestring fry, um, a waffle fry, a curly fry? I love steak fries. I think I love steak fries because in Scotland we would get we would call it a chippy. We would get fish and chips every Friday. Oh, when, when I was younger, as like our family, we would go like to the local chip shop and we would get them. And their fry, the fries in Scotland are always like really thick. So I just love like thick fries. In America, I feel like most fries are just like really like a lot thinner. Yeah. And I love a good uh, steak fry. I'm with you. Jam. I need to go to a chippy. Me too. That's yes. A chippy. a chippy. <laughs> yeah. A chippy. That's why I love, um, Red Robin, because they have yes! really good fries. I was actually going to say that when you said the yeah. big fries, Red Robin. I love their fries. I That's so funny. Their fries. Yeah, they're so good. So yeah, I love fries. I can eat fries every day. <laughs> oh, they're so yummy. Oh, well, you grew up in the right place, man. They've got enough potatoes. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Oh, awesome. <laughs> okay, so best trip you've ever gone on or your dream vacation? Um, I've been to Hawaii a couple times. I loved Hawaii. It's just like such a, I don't know when you're there, you 
it's like when I'm there I just want to like leave like my normal life and just go live in the mountains and the beach <laughs> it's so beautiful but because when we lived in Scotland we could like it was a lot easier to like travel to the surrounding countries so we went to um this little island called Tenerife when I was there and I I think about that all the time I loved it there so it was beautiful my dream vacation would probably be I always wanted to go to the Maldives <laughs> oh I don't know why I just think it looks so beautiful this is the time to go I swear I'm seeing the cheapest plane tickets everywhere right now oh my now. gosh I'm gonna want to go lunch. all the places can I just have like this unlimited amount of funds and time because I want to go I everywhere <gasps> I know and traveling is just traveling is just so good for you I, I like it's just so good for the soul and it's so good I feel like to learn about and experience other cultures I just think I don't know I just think it it's just good for humans to see other people in their you know we're just soul sisters I think I feel the same way <laughs> I think so too <laughs> I love travel and I want to travel as much with my kids and also with just my husband too like both yeah are really good but I want my kids to get that culture too I want them yeah. to feel that when they go to different places and see different things because we are in our little bubble here in the suburbs of Dallas where everything just seems to be fine and dandy all the time and it's not like that around the world and I really want them to have the chance to to see that yeah I agree I that's like kind of why I was like oh, I would love to like live in Scotland with my children because like I don't know living over there just I feel like opened up my mind a little bit mm -hmm. to the because there are just I don't know you're just surrounded by all these other countries and so many cultures and and so, yeah, I just think it was really good for me. So I, I'm the same. I'm like, oh, I would just like love my kids one day to experience other stuff, you know, but it's easier said than done, I think. I know in my dream yeah. world where we have I to know. like work and yeah, <laughs> it was like, go to, to move around countries. <laughs> yeah. Live I by know. the sweat of our brow, all those things. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Our last question. Do you have a homemaking hack for us? I'm honestly not a very good homemaker. My house is so messy all the time. Um, That's because, because you're artistic. Your brain yes. is in other places. Oh, I am truly so messy. Like I am your, I am such a typical artist. Like <laughs> I'm so messy. There's just art stuff everywhere, all over the apartment. My poor husband. Um, but I will say I have like recently made the, uh, my instant pot, my best friend and it has saved me so much time so that's probably my best tag is to like just get a few like instant pot recipes that you love that are quick so that like if you're ever in a hurry or busy you can just throw them in um like I have one I do with meatballs and it's like a lasagna pasta and the instant pot, it literally takes like 15 minutes and it's so yummy and so easy so that's definitely my biggest tack because it saves me so much time that's awesome what are some of the other things that you make in there what do you have any other favorites? oh my gosh there's this butter chicken indian recipe oh, i love indian I made. butter chicken oh me too it's so good and i made it the other day in the instant pot it only took me like 20 like 25 minutes total time it was so fast and so good so there's that what else do i make in the instant pot I'm trying to remember yeah i make like a a few different kind of like pastas and some like kind of curry things. I'll have to send you some. <laughs> um, that sounds so good. I yeah, love my so instant good. pot. My nephew calls it the magic pot. He's told me, <laughs> my, my sister-in-law, he's like, everything you make in that is delicious. It's the magic Aww. pot. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I still oh. think it's a magic pot. I'm like, I don't understand how the instant pot can tell what's in the pot and it knows how long it needs to calibrate. I don't know how it works. It just hurts my brain. I'm like, <laughs> it's magic. I'm like, what? <laughs> it crazy. is awesome. I love it. I'll have to post some instant pot recipes in our show notes oh, that we've done. Yes. I love yes. doing chicken in the instant pot. If it's frozen, you can just throw it in there. Yeah. It's done so quick. I know. I'm like, how? Yeah. I have a chicken tortilla soup that I really love to do in the instant oh. pot. But oh my so, gosh, I need that from you. All you have to do is throw your avocado in when it's done and your chips or whatever you want to put on Oh my top. gosh. It's so good. I don't have a good 
chicken tortilla soup recipe. So I definitely have to steal that. Okay. You'll have, <laughs> you'll, you'll have to take it. So good. Oh, but let's say one more time where we can find you. So everybody knows. Okay. So yes, I'm mostly on Instagram. My Instagram is page pain underscore creation. Okay. And, that's me. and then you have your website too, right? Oh yeah. My website is just page pain creations.com. And then that's, yeah, you can spend ages on there because there's like uh, so many things to look at, but that's where you can find all my artwork and my online courses as well. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Paige. Yeah, thank you. It was so good. Nice to talk to you. Ah, isn't Paige the cutest? I just love her so much. So make sure you go follow her. Now we're going to hear from our friend Lindy Shock from Enix Studies. And Lindy is amazing. She creates Sunday school content that you can use with your families. You can print them off. They're digital, awesome little lessons. And they follow the Come Follow Me curriculum from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And she's going to give us just a little spoonful of spirit, a little message for today. And if you are interested in anything that she has in her shop, we have an awesome coupon code for you to get 30% off. So all you have to type in is happy 30 exclamation point. So that's capitalized H-A-P-P-Y three zero exclamation point. And you can get 30% off anything in the Enix study shop. So here's Lindy. Hey, Lindy, let's hear our little spoonful of spirit for the day. Okay, today the lesson is about marriage and, and more specifically marriage between husband and wife. And it is a more sensitive topic, I feel like, in, in our world today. And so I want to be bold in saying, saying the family proclamation and, and the eternal laws that are set up around marriage as a husband and wife are true. And they are there for a reason. They are just like we were talking about the laws, preparing for God's laws, and, and that there's blessings and there's it is there for us. The laws are there for us and our benefit and our, our progression. Um, and also the flip side of that is the culture of our day and, and the people who are struggling with all of the different things that they can struggle with with marriage, right? Of being single, being divorced, being attracted to the same, their same gender, of, of all of these things that, um, that are real. They are very real. And, and they are very, can be very difficult for the people who are going through them. So I want to be sensitive to that as well. So that's my goal in, in today's conversation is, is to share truth and and share it boldly but also to to tell everybody that where you are is okay <laughs> you know and the things that you struggle with god knows and and he he knows where you're at but i was single until i was 32 which isn't very long i know that in the in the world today that's not very long but in in our culture um in my my culture as being LDS, then there were pressures there. My mom was worried that I was never going to be married. <laughs> and even me, like when I was 19, I thought I would say, people would say, are you going to go on a mission? I would think, I would say, if I don't get married first. And in my mind, I was thinking I'm totally going to be married by the time I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even have to worry about it. Um, and that is where we're complete opposites, Lindy, because I never in a million years thought I would be engaged at 19. Like that oh. totally threw me. I had a list of all these things I was going to do. And it was like, well, oh. I guess the plan is different. So it's never what we think, right? Yeah, you are my sister. So me and my sister were different. Okay. She and you're like my and sisters. Sister. They were both married either at 30 yeah. or just before 30, you know, just yeah. so. She didn't want to get married. She was engaged at 19. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we yeah. all get what we don't think. <laughs> um, but with that comes a perspective of, I've had that conversation with God of like, if I never get married, if this isn't in the cards for me, where, what does that mean for me? Am I going to be a virgin? Always. Am I going to hang on to my testimony? Am I going to do, you know, what does that mean for me? Because I, I mean, I had 10 years of like, oh, I thought I'd be married by now to kind of go through these things. And I remember at, um, 
age 27. I finally got to the point where I'm like, I should not be trying so hard to get married. <laughs> this shouldn't be my only focus. And so then I was able to let go of some of that stuff and, and move forward with, with my life, with, with being the best me that I could and with progressing and growing. And that was a huge shift for me. And I was okay at that point with being single forever and what that would look like. And in fact, it got to the point where my prayers were said something like this, like, Heavenly Father, this person really wants to get married. <laughs> so if it's between her and me, let it be her. <laughs> I'm fine. And so, and I say these things because, because I know personally what people are thinking uh, as far as, and even in same sex, and, I, and this is gonna be very bold, when you're attracted to your same gender, then there is kind of a choice. There is, there is nowhere that it says that, you, that it's a sin to be attracted to your same gender. There's nowhere that says that. Um, the, but there is a law that says, it's called the law of chastity, that you don't enter into sexual relations without being married and more specifically being married husband and wife. And I know, I know, that that is difficult. <laughs> I can't imagine what that would feel like, but there, but you do have a choice. You have a choice of the same choice that I have. Like, do I want to be single my whole life and, and pray and hope that, that this will all work out? You know, this will all figure out in the next life and, and live. And I know that's a difficult choice. I have people in my family and close friends where that, where they, they had, they're struggling with those things. So and, and for all those single people out there, um, I know 32 is still fairly, fairly young to get married, but, but I also know some of the stuff that you're going through. And, and I just want to say that there, there is a place for all of us in the gospel. There is a place for all of us in God's arms. I want to say this with the spirit and I want people to receive it with the spirit. I would dare say that if, even if you've made the choice to to break the law of chastity god still loves you if you've made these choices to to not live that law don't forsake god because of that choice i think that's the hardest part is that they make these choices and um and they walk away from god thinking that he doesn't love them anymore and that is is so far from the truth if you have chosen to break the law of chastity for whatever reason, God, there is, there is a place for you in God's arms. So choose, choose God and choose your life and see where that takes you. Um, and that would just be my, my challenge is, and, and on the other side of, of me, okay, and now I want to talk about the other side of that is there's people like me that I don't have those challenges. I'm married now. Um, I don't have a same-sex attraction. And if I know that God still loves these people, then I give them my love too. You know, if, if somebody that you know is making these choices, love the crap out of them. <laughs> you know, it doesn't change who they are. It doesn't change your relationship with them. I mean, it might slightly but not really. And, and just love, just love and, and, and unity and show them the love of Christ, because that's, that's what everybody should feel no matter what. I, I have my weaknesses. We <laughs> I all have, do. <laughs> I, I have anger and, and I pray every day that, um, that the atonement will help my kids move past some of my anger fits my tantrums. <laughs> um you know I, everybody has something that they're that they are working on um and god still loves us but i do want to testify and and share that in the pre-earth life there was gender and this is all in the family proclamation in the pre-earth life there was gender and, and there was a purpose to that gender um and there was a plan and then here we have gender and in the eternities there is a plan and, and a blessing for husband and wife being married together. There is a progression and, and a, an eternal law that is connected to marriage as husband and a wife. And I want to emphasize that as truth. 
and, and invite all families to read the family proclamation and to figure out how that fits into your life. Love it. It's perfect. Thank you, Lindy. Yeah, thank you. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend and don't forget to rate us and review us if you like us. And we're so happy to chat with you again next week.